Thank you. The question is the grievance has been noted. I call the member for Fairfax. It wasn't long ago that Darwin was being bombed. Darwin has always been a critical component in the defence of Australia. Defence is a large presence in Darwin, as, as does our Border Force and Customs. It stands as the last centre at the gate of our freedom and security. Gar Darwin is more than just a city. It bears the marks of war and the defiance of the whole nation in times of adversity in World War II and against Cyclone Tracy. Thousands of Australians have given their lives to preserve our alliance with the United States of America. The ANZUS Treaty requires continual consultation between the United States and Australia. Australia is part of the Five Eyes and relies upon the support and access to intelligence to protect, defend Australia and the freedom we all enjoy under the law. The United States has shown a strong commitment to protect and defend Australia in times of war and times of peace. The first obligation the Australian government is to secure and protect the Australian people. President Obama and the Prime Minister, uh, uh, had to bring the Prime Minister to account as to why the Australian government had allowed the lease of the Port of Darwin to Chinese Communist government-owned companies. Under the Gillard and Abbott government, we got a commitment from the United States to station its forces in Darwin. If the Nazis had leased the port to the Allies in Normandy, it, wouldn't have saved, it would have saved the Allies many lives and timing in having to build an artificial harbour. For the last five years, I have stood as the last Australian trying to stop the Chinese government-owned companies gaining control of my company and the port at Cape Preston in Western Australia. The Barnett government has done all that it could to pressure us to hand our port to the Chinese government-controlled companies. Imagine providing control of a multi-billion dollar port to a foreign government right where our country produces 50 per cent of our export income. Is that the right thing to do? The WA Premier thinks so. He's been bending over backwards to sell, give, lease or grant Chinese government control over the new port at Okoji in Western Australia. In New South Wales, the Chinese Communist government owns already uh, has taken control over the Newcastle port in the Honey Valley, which is the, one of the main ports responsible for the nation's coal exports. Why does the Communist government of China want to control so many of our ports? If they can quietly gain control of our ports, they can decide in what proportion we export our commodities and to who. They can and will manipulate prices, including port charges, and being a monopoly, in a monopoly position to ensure our companies receive less and our production is according to China's central planning for China's needs. This will choke our exports, reduce our prices and just control our industries and will just compromise our sovereignty. Why does the Australian government allow Chinese state-owned companies to take control of crucial assets of the Australian economy? A former Prime Minister, who shall remain nameless, said Australia's relationship with China was based on fear and greed. It seems to me to be based on greed and stupidity. It, I can't purchase Chinese ports. The Chinese government won't let me. Why does our government allow state-owned Chinese companies are not there just to make a profit. They're there to pursue the policy and long-term objectives of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. Two Chinese companies, both supported by the Chinese government, bid for control of the Woomera prohibited zone. When is the government going to wake up and defend Australian interests? The Prime Minister and the Treasurer must, must take immediate action to stop all future acquisitions of ports and major strategic assets to resume all Australian ports that have been transferred to Chinese state-owned companies and to pay compensation as required under our constitution. The incompetence and negligence of advice that the government receives from the public service is beyond belief on this matter. The pen pushes at defence say Darwin Port is not used by the Navy. That's just not true. But even if it was, the so-called defence exports, the question is not what the current use is, but what use it could be put to and how it would threaten Darwin and US and Australian bases there. President Obama couldn't believe that the government allowed important strategic assets to be sold. Let's face it, the Northern Territory government is one of the most disorganised governments Australia has ever seen. Propped up by contractors and lobbyists and interested in work or advantage for themselves, with members of parliament that one day are liberals, the next day they're independents, a chief minister that lost the leadership and refused to go, and the, and the ultimate responsibility for the Northern Territory government must rest with the Commonwealth of Australia. 
and it's time to intervene for the benefit of all Australians and in particular for the citizens of the Northern Territory. I'm calling on the Prime Minister to resume all Australian ports, least are in control of foreign powers and restore the obligations of the ANZUS Treaty to consult with our, our US allies over these and many other important matters. There are a few times in the history when Australians have been called upon to protect their freedom, to save their way of life, and this is such a moment. We know from the Chinese consul that defected recently, back in 2005, he told the government and stated publicly that the Chinese government has over 1,000 spies in Australia that have been involved in kidnapping and surveillance and hacking Australian commerce. China has secured control of land surrounding Asia's new headquarters here in Canberra. Canberra. They have shipped over $700 million of iron ore concentrate from my company's mining leases in Western Australia and not paid for it. It seems to them that China free trade agreement means that trade with Australia is free. The extent of Chinese Communist government infiltration into Australia and its businesses is a concern to the President of the United States of America. The Prime Minister and the government must act not to give platitudes but tangible results to stop the Chinese government controlling our water, power, ports and our daily lives. The Chinese government will print as much money as it takes to get the job done. In the final analysis, is freedom for sale? Is our sovereignty for sale? Is our democracy for sale? What sort of people would we be and how could we face the hundreds of thousands of Australians who have gone to war to protect our liberty if we sold our country.